This conference will now be recorded. Hi all. Good morning. Good morning. Good evening. Welcome to the pre-workshop on correlation with JMeter, exclusively provided by Isha Training Solutions for the performance testing fraternity. So, as you know, it has been a continuous approach, continuous you know effort of Isha Training Solutions to provide you know qualitative sessions to the different aspirants on different topics and performance testing is one of them so in an effort to make people aware about performance testing different workshops are being conducted by isha training solutions at different times so with that particular approach we are conducting this free workshop on correlation with jmeter so before we start the workshop let me first of all introduce myself my name is chandra and I have like 14 years of experience in performance testing and engineering. I, um, I have been providing training on different tools, technologies, performance testing and all for Isha training solutions for more than three years now. And we regularly, you know, conduct these workshops. I provide training to multiple batches, you know, uh, so, but yes, today's workshop is completely free of cost for everyone. So I'll request everyone to please make the best use out of it. So the session is going to be recorded as the recording is already in progress. So I'll request everyone to be on mute. However, whenever you have any queries, please unmute yourself and ask your query. I'll be sharing my screen. So I'll, I won't be able to see if anyone has put any message in this chat or if anyone has raised your hand. So I'll request, please unmute yourself, ask your query. Okay. So before I start any queries, anyone? Before I start, any queries, anyone? Okay, I'll take it as. Are you provide Are you providing this recording with us? Yeah, the recording will be provided. Thank you. Yeah. And before I start, I would like to know if anyone in this session already has experience on performance testing. Anyone of yes. you? Okay. How many of you have experience on performance testing? If you can put. Uh, you know, say yes in the chat, probably. Okay. So only one or two people experienced in performance testing. Okay. Okay. How many of you are aware of JMeter? So three people are from performance testing. So I guess only three of you are aware of JMeter or anyone else aware of JMeter. Okay. Great. So all of you have worked on JMeter or you have just heard about JMeter. How many of you have worked on JMeter? Just hard about it, uh, not to work done. Yeah. Okay, very good. Okay, so many people worked on JMeter. Good. Okay. So whoever has worked on JMeter, what made you join this workshop? I'm just asking out of curiosity. You can maybe. Unmute yourself and speak. Yeah, in my case, uh, yeah, I just uh, enrolled for the course with Isha. So, JMeter, I'm just, I just started uh, new learning. So, I thought of uh, attending these sessions to, you know, <clears throat> update myself. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Others? We joined because to revise our sets. Very nice. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Great. Okay, so I welcome all of you to this workshop, guys. Let us get started. So we are going to cover correlation in this workshop today. Correlation is a very, very important topic, not only from performance testing point of view, guys, means 
definitely it is you know the concept is very much important you need to understand it properly you need to understand it clearly so that you can implement in your project as well as from interview point of view right so everyone is uh, you know searching for new jobs every day right everyone is looking for a new switch and performance testing jobs are really hot in the market right they are a hot cake so definitely in the interviews they ask about correlation and i have also taken interviews and i have seen candidates not very much confident on correlation maybe they know the process you know how to do it but not with the concepts clear why it is done and what is the benefit right what is the significance so the concept wise people are not that much clear they might know the process they might know the process how to do it with load runner they might know the process how to do it with jmeter but not sure of the concept so the objective of today's workshop is to explain you the concept okay and also i'll be implementing the correlation guys clear any queries anyone any queries no yeah no queries okay perfect so let us get started everyone so before i start correlation okay let me start sharing my screen before that so all of you know the concept of client and server right anyone wants to add to it client and server what happens guys client server uh, that is nothing but like one tier two tier three tier we call uh, and uh, um, client is nothing but like whatever we see it is a uh, uh, front end server like it is back end uh, so whatever we communicate uh, through client uh, the validation server side validations can be done in the at the server and the server will give response to the client okay and then else in the form of in the form of json or jaxb or fixed length format okay Anyone else wants to add? Just to add, right? Multiple users can access the server. Or multiple users can uh, send the request to server to get the response. Okay. So, in a layman's language, if I ask anyone, what do, if I, I if someone asks, you know, you, and that person is not technically sound, a complete layman, if someone asks you, what is a client? What is a server? What do you have to say? Like okay. uh, it, it will be uh, uh, the web based or mobile based application will interact with the server. Let me start sharing my screen guys. Okay. So can yeah, I say okay. server is like a kitchen and uh, you know uh, servant who serves the food, right? I mean, he's like a client. Or yeah, like our, master yeah. slave relationship. Master slave. Okay. Let me start sharing my screen. Okay, guys. Is that screen visible to all of you? Let me draw a figure. Can anyone yes, confirm? Is my screen visible? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Guys, there are, you know, we have internet. On the internet, we use different applications, right? Whenever we are using any application, what are you doing? We could be using a web application on a desktop on a laptop or we could be using any web application on the mobile or we could be using any mobile application right guys we can access web applications on mobile or not everyone yes yes right so we could have mobile applications we could have web applications any application let's say abc who uses that application a user uses that application how the user uses they use it on their browser 
that browser could be present on a desktop on a laptop on a mobile device or through the mobile application right they are using the application so whenever any user is trying to use the application they use the desktop or the laptop or the mobile device or basically the browser that is the client that is the client right and when the user is using the application on the client on the browser how that application you know is catered to the user how the user is able to see whatever it wants to see right that is being processed from the server so server is somewhere located in a location because your application is getting used across locations right not is not it is not getting access from a single location right different users from different location are trying to use your application so whenever your app so your application is located at a place it could be any of the data center and all and it is hosted on the servers and whoever all the users trying to access the application are going to access from that data center guys your so what is happening whenever you are trying to use an application let's say this is my client right this is my client and whenever any user is trying to use the application they perform user actions agree guys user action okay so what is the user action whenever i'm doing any action on my client on my browser on my mobile device and as a result of which you know there is a request going to the server guys i launch a url i hit it, i hit the enter so that is a user action because of the user action because of the user action if there is an interaction with the server interaction with the server means whenever so let's say this is the browser okay on my system i have the browser i did some user action on this when when i say user action on the browser i launched a new url i opened any link what is happening in the back end a request is going from the browser to the server so this is my server guys server means where my application is hosted all the requests will go to that server guys again will not go to the server architecture again there could be different types of architectures so the request goes from the client to the server agree then the server will get this request the server will then process this request so this request can be a valid request can be an invalid request so based on the validity whether it is a valid or invalid the server will process that and once it processes because it has got the request right it will send back the response okay it will send back the response to the client agree all of you or not okay that response could be a valid response or invalid response it depends on the request right request and other conditions as well so the user will use the browser that is the client the request will go from the browser to the server or from the client to the server and then from the server the once the processing is done for the request that response will come back this request went to the server because of the user action guys right because of the user action the request went to the server whenever one user action results in an interaction with the server whenever one user action results in an interaction with the server we call it as what do we call it guys client server right transaction transaction okay right whenever any user action results in an interaction with the server that we call it as a transaction am i clear any queries anyone okay 
So this is our client server interaction base. Now, in performance testing, what we do, we all do, we all capture the requests and responses. Or we basically, what we do in performance testing, guys? In functional testing, we test the scenarios, different test scenarios functionally, right? In performance testing also, we do the performance testing of different user flows. And we do the performance testing with like 500, 1000, 5000, 10,000 users. Agree? Now, to do the test with 5000 users, 10,000 users, it is really difficult, guys, right? I, I, will I deploy or will I ask 10,000 people to come and do the test for me? Very difficult, right? Practically impossible. That is why we take the help of different performance testing tools. And one of them is Jmeter and Jmeter is an open source performance testing tool. That is why it has too much of demand in the market. Clear? Now, when we are doing performance testing, multiple users, the we are testing with multiple users. So those users are our virtual user size. Okay, so we do the recording, right? Because we have to simulate the user action with, with the help of the tool. So the tool is going to do the user flow. The tool is going to do the transactions. So you will record the user flows. We will record the scenarios, right? Whatever is in the scope of performance testing. And those scenarios becomes our test script size. We develop test scripts with the help of the performance testing tool. And we execute those test scripts. Clear this much? So... Now I will go to another term that is dynamic value. Okay, now let me explain what is dynamic value. So the figure which I just drew, like we had the client, right? Then we have the server, the request was going, the response was coming back, right? Clear? Now, we are going to do the recording, guys. When we are going to do the recording, means we are going to capture the request and response for our complete user flow, the steps, whatever we do, okay, as part of the user scenario. Now, the server will process that request and then send the response, okay? The response could be different types, right? Someone was also mentioning that. It could be HTML, it could be JSON, anything, guys. And that response is presented on the client, right? That response is present on the client. Now, let me give some use cases. So, guys, whenever you are purchasing, all of you are using e-commerce applications, right? Everyone is using nowadays. Whenever we are using an e-commerce application, we are purchasing different products. Whenever we are purchasing products, we get one order id generated right guys we get the order id generated who generates the order id anyone who generates it the application generates it right now the when the application is generating the order id the order id which is getting generated is that the same for everyone or different for every order different for every other i think it will be dynamic case? dynamic right yeah okay we'll go to that so just uh, tell me whether the order id will be different or be the same different yeah for every different. purchase for every purchase the id which will be generated that will be different guys who does not agree with me For every purchase, when the order ID is getting generated, the order ID will be a new one, a different one. Agree? So, whenever anyone has to cancel also any order, they can go to that particular order list and cancel that. Right? I cannot go and cancel an order which is already cancelled. Right? So, definitely, I need to have different order IDs, new order IDs, and it also helps to distinguish between the customers. All of you understood this use case? 
नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट का इज ऑल ऑफ यू यू ऑल वुड बी नोइंग दिस टर्म राइट यूजर सेशन यूजर सेशन हु कैन टेल मी वट इज यूजर सेशन it will be in the form of cookies now no, what is an user session uh, not browser which will be opened by the users when we oh. open one site login it will create one session that is the user session it will has some time like 5 minutes based on the site 5 minutes or 2 minutes after 2 minutes automatically the session will be closed if you are still using it if we are using it on close if we okay. are uh, uh, leave like a one or two minutes then the session will be closed automatically that is your session time out duration right Correct. after how much of time of no of no activity no usage your session gets timed out very good anyone else wants to answer what is a user session guys session is like you are interacting with the system whenever you log in the, the session will be created very good so login. whenever any user guys is using the application is starting to use the application right whenever any user is trying to start using the application the session gets created a connection gets established so the user will use the application from the client so from that particular client the user session will start so when multiple users are using the application there will be multiple user sessions agree all of you whenever multiple users are using the application there will be multiple user sessions now when there are so many user sessions open or in progress right whenever there are so many user sessions in progress wouldn't it be difficult for the server to uniquely identify yes yeah all of you agree see where am i taking you to right when there are so many user sessions in progress wouldn't it be difficult for the server to uniquely identify each and every user whose whose ever session is in progress guys because the server has to process the requests coming from them right it has to send the response back to them and it should not happen that the server is sending the response of one user to another user right the mismatch should not happen so it has to uniquely identify also right which session belongs to which user and all whenever it is processing the requests are all of you understanding my point yeah yeah okay. so how does the server identify guys anyone any idea there is a session id that will be generated for each very session. good one of the implementation could be session id great guys you all know so many things session id right what can be something else uid sorry user id uid no user id i can have multiple logins from the same user id from different you know systems so will all the interactions be treated as a same session maybe cookies it yeah. will store using cookies cookies very good anything else caching no mm, no i don't think so okay means it is related to mm. session but identifying okay some tokens yes yes sir token tokens very okay. good i was looking for that term as well yeah some tokens right guys Also, uh, Windows ID will be referred for having the session. Yes, 
so many implementations i never said like you yeah. know it is limited to this thing i'm just trying to hear mm -hmm. out from you guys okay so in general normally we have session id we have cookies we have tokens authorization tokens right guys so to uniquely identify each and every session a different session id is assigned to each and every session so with the help of the session id i can know which request is coming from which particular session or which request belongs to which session clear all of you so what yeah, did i tell question. you now yeah tell me quick question there sir it was yeah so uh, the session id will be created whenever user log into the site or uh, will it be created without login also just uh... without login also it can be created oh, okay because i am already starting uh, interacting with the uh, application right mm -hmm. right before login itself also it can be created it all depends on the implementation whatever the development team has done mm -hmm. okay. right okay very good so what i am telling is to uniquely identify each and every session a session id will be allocated to each and every session guys and will that session id be same guys for different sessions no right the session id needs to be different to uniquely identify each and every different session agree similarly in the tokens similarly the cookies right so if they have to be different again is the user going to assign a session id to himself or herself is the user going to assign user means client you all understand right is the user going to assign a session id to himself or herself no no right it will be again generated by the server the session id will again be generated by the server and allocated to the session or assigned to the particular user session okay similarly tokens so guys what did we see here now what did we see order id or your session id or your tokens new values getting generated or different values getting generated okay two users there are two users using the application at the same time so two different sessions will be created session 1 and session 2 session will one for session 1 or for the user with session 1 server will generate session id 1 for example then for the user session 2 the server will generate another session id agree clear guys even from the same system even from the same system one user is using right the user uses the application for let's say 10 minutes and then logs out okay the session gets completed so here one session id will be generated for the particular session right then the same user after 30 minutes or 1 hour the session is already closed the previous session okay he or she is starting a new session or in the next day so the server will generate or assign another session id guys opening a new tab will it open a separate session or may might use the same session provide it Dep depends whether your previous session is active or not hmm. understood yeah yeah logical yeah. so yes so all of you understood guys how these things happen means what is the use case i'm trying to explain so we are seeing that different values getting generated by the server any query still now uh, what happens if we open in in private window or incognito window that will be a new session again okay okay any other queries anyone
okay so the different values as i showed you right for different user sessions you have different session id the order you know different orders having different order id and all these values are generated by the server guys right and these values are changing right they are different we discussed they these values are different these different values are known as dynamic values these values are known as dynamic values dynamic changing understood dynamic value means changing who did not understand dynamic value who did not understand dynamic value okay so we all understood what is a dynamic value guys okay okay so i told you that we will be doing the recording first right in jmeter we will be developing the script so for that the first step will be recording everyone recording when i'll do the recording this is my client will not go to the details of recording in gym to the concept guys again okay because that is not part of this workshop again so when we record guys okay let me tell you the concept when we do the recording we are going to do the user flows right we are going to do the user flows in jmeter or basically we are going to capture the user flows in jmeter but as a user i will do the transactions on the browser right a real user will do the transactions on the browser all of you always remember in performance testing our major objective is to simulate production behavior simulate the real user behavior so here this is my browser for example right this is my browser a normal user when they are just using the application i told you the request will go from the browser to the server but when we do the recording okay when we do the recording what happens is one moment guys when we are going to do the so when a real user tries to access the application they i will access it on the browser i request everyone to go on mute so they will access the application on the browser but when we are going to do the recording jmeter will be involved guys okay jmeter will be involved so let let's say this is my jmeter so when we do the recording what happens is whatever user flow will definitely the, do the user flow on the browser the request will originate from the browser then go to the jmeter for that we do different settings we will not cover that as part of this workshop then the request goes to the server okay and then the server will process it then what happens the server will send the response back to the server sorry to the client but whenever in real life 
the user is using the application, the response comes back from the server directly to the browser. But in this case, what will happen, you know, the response will come from the server to Jmeter and then to the browser. This is during recording, guys. Okay, this is during recording. All of you understand this, okay? This is what is going to happen. The request will go from the browser to Jmeter. This is my Jmeter, okay? Okay, this is my Jmeter. Clear all of you? From browser to Jmeter, from Jmeter to server, then server processes that. The response comes back to Jmeter, then from Jmeter to browser. So during recording, Jmeter will capture all the requests, all the response. That is the objective of our recording. Okay. Now, let's say when I'm recording, right? I told you. So let's assume that I'm doing the recording. The re request will be done on the uh, the user action will be done on the browser. It goes to the Jmeter. Then the first request, okay, goes to the server. So this is my request one. Please listen to me carefully, guys. Okay, this is my request one. So the server receives this request. The server has to process this, right? So it processes this request and then it sends back the response guys it sends back the response this response is of request one here request one goes to the server server processes it response once one goes back then once response one is received Okay, so let me draw a figure here probably or that, you know, here the interaction is happening between them. Okay. So, so when response one comes back, then my next request will go. Okay, this is my request number two. And then request to the server will process and I get back my response to means the response of request to. Okay, and then my next request goes. This is my request C. Then my response will come back. That is my response. Okay, guys, anyone, any doubts in this? So here, uh, Jmeter uh, acts between middle between client and server. It acts right. as a middleman between client and server. Very good. So whatever uh, uh, the request in the sense, we are hitting any URL or we are yes. sending any data to get that back. You are basically doing an user action like launching one URL mm -hmm. is also one user action. You are navigating to any other link in an application that is also user action. Any mm -hmm. user action which results in an interaction with the server that is your transaction. Transaction. So okay. yeah, basically for example, I tell you. Okay. For example, I'll tell you there is an email field. Okay, username field, and username field needs to be in the email ID format. You are trying to provide a username which is not in the email ID format. You get a you get an error. Okay. 
ideally that error needs to be displayed after the request goes to the server or what do you think what is the ideal implementation so once go to a server then the, the error will be displayed remember my question i have there is an username field the username accepts the format in email id format okay i'm trying to provide a username which is not in an email id format let's say i get some error displayed on the browser do you think the what is your what it is your thought what should be the matter. ideal implementation for that the front end validate and display the error it doesn't go to the server very good that's client that is a validation. that is a client side mm. validation means ideally mm. some people might do server side validation also but that is not the correct practice okay so for these kind of validations ideally client side validations should be done and when it is client side validation remember the interaction does not happen with the server so that is why i am saying only when one user action leads to an interaction with the server that will be called as a transaction understood yeah, everyone got it yeah understood okay. very good now see guys you are telling me any other question one question here when you said um the request goes to j so let's say i'm using browser and i'm sending sending some request so it goes to jmeter and jmeter will send it to server and when it gets when server send the response jmeter is capturing that and sending to browser is it like that yes yeah. yes that is during recording okay when recording yeah during recording so basically jmeter is like a proxy right very good yes jmeter acts, acts like a proxy and okay. one more yeah. query i hear yes. that in e-commerce sites like flipkart and amazon even though i cleared cookies they track who is the user and what they are searched earlier and they set the price tag also different to the different users of that product accordingly how do they set this even though if it is we clear the cookies and sessions no if you clear the cookies cash and all it will be difficult for them to track we so have if they are doing that then i do not have you know that particular idea like if that is happening then how it is happening okay even though we we clear the cookies and cash also sometimes we are unable to track like uh, some of the offers they had given right at that time we are trying to book the product we are facing these type of issues so. Okay, sorry, I'm not aware of it. Okay. So we'll come to this. So guys, now let me explain you this scenario. Okay. So you understood how dynamic values are generated, right? So let's say when the server processes this request one, listen to me carefully. When the server processes this request one. it generates a dynamic value let us assume okay let us assume whenever the server processes the request number 1 it generates a dynamic value okay it generates a dynamic value guys clear yes that dynamic value i am representing as db01 server generated the dynamic value and that dynamic value comes back to the client in response 01 okay request one went to the server and as per the application logic whenever it will process request one it generates the dynamic value 01 it does not mean that every application guys there will be a dynamic value in request one no i'm just giving one example okay in an application whenever request one goes the request one is processed and db01 that is a dynamic value is generated on processing that request that dynamic value comes back to the server in the response okay then let us say that the same dynamic value has to be sent back to the server in request number 2 then only the server can know that this request belongs to this particular user session with the help of this dynamic value 
okay let's say this is the session id guys okay the session id is generated by the server it assigns that session id to the session so this session id has to be sent in the subsequent request so that the server can you know uniquely identify it understood so what am i saying here dv01 okay dv01 will again go to the server okay in request to okay similarly in request 3 also let's say dv01 is going the dynamic value which was generated while processing request number 1 the same dynamic value is getting sent in request number 2 and request number 3 this is the application behavior agree all of you means whenever it is not only to do with recording whenever a real user is also using the application on the browser this is what will happen the dynamic value will be generated when request one is processed and that dynamic value will be again be sent in request two and request three okay clear for, the, for that session yeah for that session yes okay everyone so at this point of time, if any other user is using the same application, what happens? Another dynamic value would be getting generated when request one is processed and that dynamic value would be getting sent back to the server again in request two and request three. Clear? Everyone? Yes. yes Very anyway. good. Now this is my recording. Please don't forget this. Okay. This is my recording. guys. Next we go to replay we go to replay replay with jmeter guys again okay replay jmeter sorry In the meantime, if any one of you have any queries, please let me know, guys. Yeah, dynamic values are always same. It won't vary. Did I say dynamic values are same? I never said that. Dynamic values are different. That is why they are called as dynamic values. Why will be the same? Means in what respect? It is same for that session. It is same for that session. Yes, that particular dynamic value. Yes. That particular dynamic value will be same for that particular user session. Ah, oh, okay. So, I did the recording, right? And I, when I did the recording, all my request responses are captured agree then when i do the replay guys when i do the replay my browser will not come into picture okay remember this whoever is aware of jmeter they would already be knowing this whoever is not aware remember jmeter sorry the browser does not come into picture during replay that is why we do the performance testing with the performance testing tool guys right there is no real user involved Let's say like 5,000 users or 10,000 users to do the test with the help of the performance testing tool. So the replay when we do, replay when we do the requests originate from JMeter. There is no browser involved in replay. Clear? Now, so when you do the replay, the only difference is browser is not there. JMeter will send the request. So request one will again go, guys right request one will again go request one will be processed and i told you as per the logic of the application whenever request one will be processed a dynamic value will be generated now when i do the replay guys same a dynamic value will be generated will this dynamic value be different or same 
different others will this value be same or different the one which will be generated during replay different different yeah, obviously different, yeah. different than others, yeah. others every session it will be different for each session also it will be different okay so all of you agree that the value which will be generated by the server during replay will be different or it will be same anyone saying same very good guys remember the value which will be generated by the server will be different that is why we call it as dynamic value right so this will be db02 let's assume so db02 will come in the response one right back to the client or j meter now comes the important question guys i'll tell you an assumption here okay listen me carefully i have only done the recording i have only done the recording with j meter and then i am replaying it and one sincere request here one one more request here whoever is already aware of correlation i will uh, request you to please uh, you know stay silent uh, whoever is not aware i want to understand the thought process so i'm asking this question for them so the co next question is guys what do you think let me know db02 generated by the server comes back in response one so when i'm replaying right request two will also go request three will also go tell me what do you think which value will get passed in request two and request three I have only done the recording, nothing else, and in do, and I'm doing the replay. So which value will go in request two and request three? Guys, uh, think and tell. Section ID, whatever the uh, section ID recorded as the first place that will go, but it's no more active that section, so our replay will fail. Okay. Others. Yeah, it's gonna fail. It's gonna fail. Yeah. Others. Repeat the question, Others. please. Okay, I repeat. I'm doing the replay. Okay, replay means whatever I have captured during recording, I'm just re-executing them. Okay, and that will happen from JMeter only this time. No browser involved. Okay. I'm sorry. So when I do the replay, request one goes to the server. A dynamic value gets generated. That is DV02. Okay. That will be different than recording, definitely. So my next question is, as per application logic, the dynamic value needs to pass through request 2 and request 3. So same in replay also, that value will get passed. So tell me whether D means what will happen, whether DV02 will get passed in request 2 and request 3 that is the question yes it will it's like it will passed as the hard coded value okay yeah it will replace so it will replace okay yeah no 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 when you replay it won't replace but as part of the recording whatever captured as the section id that will be recorded section id passed as the hard coded value that no more active um can you please call out your name whoever was answering uh, raj okay i do aware of performance system previously yes oh very good so guys the answer which we got you know that the recorded value will only get passed okay why i asked you are you aware of performance system because i uh, told you know whoever is aware uh, to hold back a bit so that others can think and tell but no worries so we got the answer from the participants 
So guys, remember, I told you one assumption that we have only done the recording. We have not done anything else. Understood? And then we are simply replaying the recorded script. DV02 will be generated by the server. That is a new dynamic value. As per the expectation. But JMeter, this time what is happening? JMeter will send the request, right? JMeter is not that intelligent, guys. JMeter is not that intelligent or any other tool also. So whenever you are replaying, so this DV01 was captured as part of recording, right? And it would be there in the request, subsequent requests. So what will happen here, you know? Instead of DV02, DV01 will only get passed. DV01 will only get passed. And tell me, guys, if DV01 gets passed, will the request pass or fail? Because someone also answered that, right? That the request will fail. Why, guys? Why the request will fail? Because the server is expecting DV02 here. But you are sending DV01. Means JMeter is sending DV01. Understood all of you? Yes, yeah, perfect. Did all of you understand this? Many people are not able to explain this. Here, what happened is the dynamic value which is generated during replay that is not getting sent rather the recorded dynamic value is only getting passed as a result these requests are going to fail and hence we are our execution is also going to fail so in interviews you will get the question what is correlation why do you need correlation okay correlation is the process of handling the dynamic values now we need to handle them right properly means when i say handle them means whatever dynamic value is generated by the server that has to be sent in the subsequent request wherever they are required during replay so correlation is the process of handling the dynamic values in our performance test script so that they do not fail guys and you need to explain this with an example. Just remember this figure and try to explain this. Okay. The interviewer will completely agree and come to a conclusion that you are clearly aware of correlation. Must question, guys, whoever you know attend for performance system interviews, you say, let's say three years experience, five years experience, seven years experience. And if you say that you are doing test script development, they will definitely ask you about correlation. Understood all of you the problem statement. That is why we do correlation. We need to handle the dynamic value. So in this case, we do not have to send DV01. We need to send DV02. Right? So the question is how? We do it with the help of correlation. Clear, all of you? Now, how will you identify the dynamic values in your script? Because you would be doing the test script development for the first time for a new application, right? For a, for a new application you are doing, you are not aware of the dynamic values. So the best practice is, is to record your script twice. Okay, you record your script twice. Now, if we see this figure itself, okay, this recording, if I do twice, if I refer to request number two in both the scripts, what will I see, guys? The value which is getting sent in request two, the, the value, this particular value, let's say, will that value be same in both the scripts? No. All of you? Oh, yeah. Will it be same? No, it won't be same. Yeah. I am no, going to do same. the recording twice. Okay. 
So this value which is getting sent in request 2 and request 3, will that value be the same in both the recordings? No. Okay, remember this, it is no. So when you compare both the scripts, you will be able to see that the values are changing and they are your candidates for dynamic values. And remember one more property, those values should be generated by the server guys. It's not that you are giving new, it means they, are, they should not be user inputs. Can all of you please go on mute? They should not be user inputs. A user can, let's say they are searching for products, right? I'm searching a product, one product this time, I'm searching another product the other time. They are not dynamic values, remember. Whichever value is generated by the server, they are your candidates for correlation. Okay, they are your candidates for correlation, guys. Clear? Yeah. Okay. So, now we will see how to handle this. This correlation is done with the help of the geometry element known as post processor. There are different post processors. One is regular expression extractor. Okay. And there are other ones also. Another one is JSON extractor. Okay. We'll see both of them. Any queries anyone till now? All of you understood this? concept uh, let us go to let us quickly record one script okay i'll use a very sam simple application because many of the participants are also new to performance testing so we'll quickly record a script i'll use the recording template to record this script so the application which I'm going to record is let store dot octopore dot com guys. Okay. So see guys, I launched the application, okay, and then we'll do the next user action. Mm -hmm. 
then I will click on sign in. and then I will sign out. Okay, so these are my steps guys. I'll stop the recording and I can see that my recording log is captured. Okay, and here you see. Okay, everyone see someone is asking uh, before login can we have dialing values see all of you here in this request there is a session id getting passed okay there is a session id getting passed here so i have been logged in yet right so i hope you your answer is, you got your answer so before login also you can have dining values so all of you see here uh, I know that this is a dynamic value. So, but when I, the process which I told, if you do the recording twice, you will see a different value getting passed here in the session ID, guys. Okay. Now, all of you see here, this value is getting passed in request number. So, we will refer to the request at the end, guys. Okay. So, whatever request is, uh, number is there at the end, request number 46, right? This value is getting passed in request number 46. And definitely now you saw the recording. I never entered this value anywhere. Agree? I never entered this value anywhere, guys. Right? So let us see whether th this value is coming from the server or not. It is going in the request number 46. If this is going in request number 46, and if this value would be coming from the server, it would be coming in the response of any of these three requests or not everyone 25 29 30 if this value is going in request number 46 it would have come in the response of 25 or 29 on 30 or not yes agree all of you yes let us see in which response it is coming in the response of which request it is coming how will i know that i will go to the recording log okay and i will search for this value these are the steps for correlation guys these are the steps for correlation what will i do i need to first identify the dynamic value how do i identify the dynamic value i told you that you will do the recording twice in the recording you will compare the recording Compare each and every request from the two recordings and see 
where you are seeing different values getting passed in the request they are your candidates for dynamic value you also need to check after that whether they are coming from the server or not so now i'll see whether it is coming from the server or not so i go to the recording log i will search that value here okay i search that value here i click on search so over here it will highlight you see all of you can you see some red boxes right so jmeter will yes. highlight you where this value is found in which sampler the value is found guys it could be present in request it could be present in response that we will find out later in which request it, in which sampler it is present 29 it is highlighting 30 it is highlighting 46 also highlighting let us go to 29 if i go to 29 i can see the request and response here let me find out in the request now to find out whether it is present in the request or not i'll copy that value so what i'm doing now i have identified my dynamic value okay then i am checking its occurrence where is it present actually see here it is not going in the request number 29 that is a good news right because this is the first occurrence which i'm trying to search in the request header i will again try to search see not found i go to response body i put it here i click on find see here all of you something is highlighted in green something is highlighted in green what does that mean everyone that this value is coming in the response of request 29 okay this value is coming in the request of 29 so i'm capturing the recording details now okay in the response of request 29 it is coming guys response of request 29 right what is coming the session id is coming from the server did all of you understand how did i found out find out okay and then it was passing in my request number 46 it was passing in my request number 46 guys if i go to request number 46 here if i go to the request body see all of you here it is getting passed right request 46 are these two values same are these two values same yes very good next if i refer my figure the figure which i drew here right this value is my dv01 all of you agree this value yes yes and dynamic values will be guys you know alphanumeric or alphanumeric with special characters okay those are also some hints but first is you have to find out which are the dynamic values then the question which i asked you all i will not do anything right i will not do anything i'll just replay one recorded script here i will just replay the recorded script so let me replay this now this is one user one iteration I will again refer to I will again refer to request 29 and request 46 but in request 29 I'll refer the response okay can you please go on mute can you please go on mute
humble request everyone whenever there are no queries please do not unmute yourself all of you see the same response i'm taking from the replay now compare this value and this value same or different 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 all of you agree so can i call it as dv01 and this is dv02 clear yes very good and this is guys this replay is before correlation okay then we need to this also i need to show you right that in request number 2 and 3 which value is going right so we need to go and check again request number 46 of replay clear so i go back to request number 46 of replay and the same thing i'll copy again which i had copied previously please compare both of them are the values same no different 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 yes. but is it same with this one yes. yes all of you check this clear yeah so whatever i explained you in this figure is that correct so guys yeah. we need to handle this situation see server is sending this dynamic value in the response but i am passing this request which is not correct right so i need to go back and do the you know correlation correlation so how do we do correlation we have identified the dynamic value next what will you do you know we will extract okay we will extract this dynamic value from the response whatever dynamic value is coming okay we will extract the dynamic value from the response and assign that value to a variable we will extract the dynamic value from the response and assign it to a variable and that variable we are going to replace in the subsequent request guys that variable we are going to replace in the subsequent requests so during run time whatever dynamic value comes from the server that will be extra extracted assigned to the variable and because i have replaced my variable in the request instead of the hard coded values so whatever value gets assigned to the variable that value will get passed in the request space okay so let us quickly do that so the first post processor and i told you correlation will do with the help of post processor so the post processor which we are going to use is the regular expression extractor i told you we will extract the value from the response so when i am talking about response guys i need to operate with sampler number 29 i hope you understand because this value is coming from the server in the response of this request right so i go back to request 29 i'll add a post processor to this see there are so many post processor we will see the regular expression extractor first in the regular expression extractor there are different fields guys apply to main sample sub sample if you select this particular option then your correlation or extraction will get applied to your main sample or parent sample and the sub samples means child sample 
or main sample only or sub sample only or you can do also with the geometry variable name we'll do it with main sample which fields you want to apply this to whether to the response body or unescaped response body body as a document response header request header url anything so basically here we have got the we are getting the dynamic value in the response body so i choose response body then we'll create a variable session id is my variable let's say i give the name and then we're we are going to create a regular expression now what is a regular expression guys anyone not related to jmeter right what is a regular expression we do it, it should match the pattern basically yeah. we are giving a pattern right Alpha basically number. we are going to give a pattern and we are going to do the match in a string so wherever wherever that pattern gets matched that particular portion gets extracted or that is our our regular expression will do the pattern matching basically so i have to do a i have to give a regular expression now how we give regular expressions in jmeter we are going to extract a value okay so we enclose that value in these two parentheses okay and inside the parentheses we provide some special characters like dot plus and question mark in interviews they will ask you about this also so what is this parenthesis for this is to enclose the extracted value okay this is known this entire thing will be called as extraction group so whatever i'm extracting i'm enclosing them with these two parentheses dot is to match a character it matches any character dot will match any match any character and plus signifies at least one match or more than one match at least one match or more than one match and when and question mark means when you get the match stop when you get the match stop so this is known as my extraction group okay and to write the regular expression we use the extraction group with left boundary plus extraction group i'll write as eg and then right boundary now what is this left boundary right boundary you take some portion of the string from the left of the value which you are trying i'm trying to extract this value right this particular value i'm trying to extract from the response so i will take some portion of the string from to from the left and i'll take some portion of string from the right that becomes my left boundary and right boundary this is my right boundary this is my left boundary clear so my left boundary becomes this one let's say dot plus question mark and right boundary is this one so i have designed this regular expression means i'm thinking that this will be my regular expression i need to test it i need to test it right so i copy this i was finding the value in this particular recording log i will try to find out the same using the regular expression you see now i click on find guys see it is showing a pink color means no result found because you see this is a pattern which i have provided and if you have provided a regular expression on the right hand side you see there is a checkbox for regular expression you need to select that then if i click on find now you see white color and you see there is a match can all of you see that so i can conclude that my regular expression is working i copy this and put it in the regular expression extractor then template template means the number of extraction group in my regular expression guys which i wrote here 
how many extraction group is there only one right only one this is my extraction group your regular expression can have multiple extraction groups also so this template refers to which extraction group number you want to assign to this variable i have only one extraction group so i'll give dollar one dollar so you see here it is written dollar i dollar right we we'll give in that format where i is the capturing group number i have only one extraction group so i'll give dollar 1 dollar this also many people are not able to say why we give dollar 1 dollar simply they will say no in template we will give dollar 1 dollar but why no answer match number all of you see this now i have given this regular expression this is one match right if i click on find see all of you one regular expression can return so many matches it can have so many matches so whichever value is matching your requirement you need to provide that okay so in my case my first match is you know okay so i'll give match number as 1 if you want the second match you give 2 if you want the ma third match give 3 if you want to take the match randomly then you give 0 if you want all the matches give minus 1 okay so i'll take one here and then if the value is not assigned to the variable if the value is not captured then if you want to assign any default value you can provide the default value here okay so not found so this default value will be you know assigned to the give a meaningful name session id not found okay so if no value will be captured by this variable then session id not found will be assigned to this so this is my regular expression extraction i have extracted the value and i have assigned to this variable what does my next task i will replace this variable in all the hard coded values i knew from here that it is going in request number 46 but it could not it might not be the only request guys it might not be the only request i'll go and search okay i'll go and search the occurrence in my test plan where that dynamic value is getting passed in which all request did all of you understand this i'll check in my test plan where exactly the value is getting passed in which all request it is getting passed i'll click on search all and expand when i click on search all and expand to see all of you it will highlight it will highlight for me so this request this request and this request you can do replace all but that is a very dangerous you can do replace also okay but that is a dangerous option i will not recommend you to do that because if the number of occurrences is very less you can easily go and manually replace it guys now when we do the replacement of the variable we have to use the jmeter variable syntax and the syntax is dollar open curly bracket variable name and close curly bracket what is my variable name here this variable name right this variable name here all of you so i copy this always copy and paste guys so that you can avoid the typo errors right and replace only in the value which you are trying to capture this one see now this is going in my request you know url the next ones you see the header managers are highlighted means the value could be going in the request headers also very very important guys so i'll replace it you see here it is going in the request header here and here also it is going in the request header okay clear all of you now you see i have done the correlation i have now replaced the variable in the hard coded values now i will clear this and i run this again then all of you see i go to 
this is before correlation right then after correlation i'll go to response of request number 29 all of you see here this value this value this one are different are different right means every time the server is generating new value everyone clear right now let us see the request number 46 if i go to request number 46 this value and this value are they both same now yes yeah. Yes, they are correlated. Same means DV zero two generated by server and DV zero two also getting passed in the subsequent requests. All of you clear or not? Uh, clear, dear. On one some small question. So when we recorded and uh, run the same script, right? So uh, runtime it is different. So script did not script did not fail, right? Or supposed yeah, to. Yeah, that fail. very good question. This script did not fail because this is a sample application. They have not. handled mm. it correctly okay. okay but in your actual application in your projects there is this request will fail actually request number 46 will fail during replay excellent yeah perfect yeah understood very good question clear all of you any questions okay so we have seen you know what is correlation what is dynamic values what is the impact of you know not handling the dynamic values and how do we handle that so i, I was thinking to cover json extractor also but again uh, due to you know surface of time we will have to stop it here today so i hope you all enjoyed the workshop you all got benefited out of it any queries anyone uh, here sometimes we are using in the expression dot star question mark sometimes we are using dot plus question mark what is the difference here very good very good question i was expecting that sometimes people use dot star question mark also and sometimes they use dot plus i told you what what did i tell you or plus match one or more It times match right and asterisk means match or zero okay. or more times okay zero or more time and this is one or more time so this is more efficient guys you can use plus okay and rest everything is same no difference okay any queries anyone uh, are we going to have the next section or this is the only one section sorry uh, are we going to have any continuous sections like the uh, workshop you are saying yeah okay so we'll you know uh, try to conduct more workshops in the future so on a regular on a regular basis we try to conduct different workshops yeah. you know so yeah yes, we'll do yes. that if it required in the future sure so it is an effort from our side you know to keep doing these workshops and educate people you know so that they can get benefited out of it okay yeah. in performance no testing in performance testing using jmeter we will write any code or any sample syntax like this No, no, these are simple. Sim, sim, this is simple, but code is coding is also there. But they are very advanced concepts. In most of the cases, coding might not be required. You know, you will be able to handle it with JavaScript itself. Sometimes custom coding would be required, but that is in very rare cases. Can you give me an example? Rare cases. Yeah, for example, you have a requirement. You know, like you have to capture some value of. and assign it to a variable and then you are want to store that value you know uh, or replace that value into some other uh, you know place in the uh, another variable and all or you want to basically uh, capture a value 
assigned to the variable and you want to write that value of the variable to a file okay output file so there can be many cases and let's say you have two different variables okay you want to if during runtime every time you want to capture one value assigned to variable one then again you uh, want to you know and you also have a variable two and then you want to swap the variable so there can be many cases but as i told you in very rare cases your custom coding will come into picture most of the things you will be able to do it with the help of jmeter itself thank you it depends on application to application and your scope yeah basically this application api also we will do performance only browser yeah no 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 api api also we do performance system nowadays api also you know we do performance system okay and one more announcement guys uh, 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 we are going to launch a new batch on you know for performance testing with jmeter where uh, we are going to cover the entire jmeter tool along with other concepts like you know dynatrace kubernetes docker microservices and all those things uh, grafana then uh, in influx db jenkins and also that will make anyone who is not aware of jmeter a complete master in jmeter at the end of the course we are going to start it very soon so whoever is interested can reach out to isha training solutions okay so one, one question sir here yeah tell me yeah for example um, we don't want to join the beginner classes due to the time sensitivity and if i am interested to just join the advanced portion like configuration of grafana kubernetes those stuff is that doable or is that has to be the entire course uh, i think uh, you can reach out to uh, kumar sir okay okay, okay or sir. you please ping in the group uh, i'll talk to kumar sir and let you know okay sir yeah what is the Any course other duration sir course duration course duration will be of 45 hours to 50 hours that means it will take uh, monday to friday yeah, we can yeah, it will be it. it will be on weekdays monday to friday so it will be like mm, the course will be covered in around two and a half months any other queries so will we get any sample uh interview questions and uh, everything yeah interview questions will be covered so for each and every topic the interview questions will be covered every session will be recorded you will have lifetime access to the videos and different materials whatever is being discussed in the sessions they will also be shared okay so all those things will be there so basically in the class uh, what type of application we will you will teach like browser applications mobile application desktop application uh, web, applic web applications and web, web services will be covered as part of the test of development mobile application will be done taken care here performance for, mo for, mo for mobile application we have a separate training so in the jmeter beginner to master mobile application is not covered so for that any other because, because the, the course becomes can... too long you know the course becomes too long so people want to you know, get it completed within less duration so they can go for interviews and so many things right so we we yeah. have different uh, different courses for different training means curated for different training so meeting the requirements of the different participants okay anyways if you have further queries please do reach out to you know our team or you can ping in the whatsapp group also team will be happy to help okay any other queries anyone So I hope you all got benefited out of this workshop today and I hope you will all be able to implement correlation, you know, uh, in your projects with Jmeter. So thank you all for joining. Thank you, sir.